In this video, I want to show the proof that the variance of a sum of random variables equals the sum of the variance of those random variables plus the covariance, uh, two times the covariance. Okay, and students often um, will accidentally drop this piece, and indeed you can drop it if x and y are uncorrelated. But generally you should not assume that x and y are uncorrelated unless you know that. Um, so generally you want to keep this piece in the back. And so um, actually before I get into this proof, let's uh, remember what is covariance by definition. Um, and actually, let's start with that by just remembering what variance is by definition. So variance by definition, the variance of a random variable x equals the expected value of the um, random variable x minus the mean of that um, of that random variable squared. So it's the it's the average squared distance from the mean. Okay, that's what variance is. Um, I will often write, instead of writing expect, uh, mu, right, I wrote that Greek letter mu to represent the mean of x, um, you could also write that as the expected value of x, okay, and that's a little more clear um, notation, okay, but the expected value of x and mu are the same thing. So mu and the expected value of x are the same thing. All right, so generally, so this is by definition, this is what the variance of x is. So what is the covariance of x and y? Um, instead of having, you know, well, actually, I think it's easy. Um, easiest way to help students remember this definition of what is the covariance of x and y is to remember, well, so the covariance of x and x equals the variance of y, of x, okay? So if you remember this, a lot of times it'll help you um, figure, remember the definition of covariance. So the, um, the covariance, instead of having the square distance from the mean, you would take the distance from the mean of x and then multiply that by the distance from the mean of y. All right, um, so this, this let me use brackets. Okay, so you can see that if I had an x here, that'd be the same thing as x and x. Then you can see that the covariance of x and x would just be equal to the variance of x. But if I have two different random variables, then I would need to break it out like this. Okay, so the, generally this is what covariance is by definition. And I just, I use this to kind of help students remember this definition because I often find that students forget the definition of covariance, which is understandable because maybe you're, you know, you, you spend a lot of time in um, elementary statistics courses talking a lot about variance, but um, you know, covariance doesn't come up until more, uh, perhaps more advanced topics, right? But it's just an extension of the old idea of variance. All right, so then once you're there, okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and start working on this proof once I've remembered those definitions. So I have the variance of x plus y, okay? And this would be the expected value Instead of, instead of x, I have x plus y, right? So I would write um, x plus y here. And then minus, instead of mu, right, which is the mean of x, it would be the expected value of x plus y. Okay, close parentheses. Um, let me use brackets and square it. Okay. <clears throat> so then from here, um, I can do a little simplification. I can, first thing I can do is I can say, okay, well, a property of expected value um, is the expected value of x plus y equals the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. And the proof for that, um, I did previously in this playlist, and I'll include that in the description of this video. So I've already shown this proof, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use this property um, right now, okay? So I, I still have x plus y in parentheses. Okay, and then I have the expected value of x um, plus the expected value of y. Okay, and that's in parentheses as well, because that minus sign is gonna to have to get distributed. 
and then I have parentheses for my squared, and then I close parentheses for the expected value. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and distribute some stuff. So I'll have x plus y minus the expected value of x minus the expected value of y. Okay, um, and then let's see, that needs to be squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring like terms next to each other. So I have the expected value of x minus the expected value of x. So x minus the expected value of x. And actually, I want to go ahead and just put that in parentheses. And then I have plus y minus the expected value of x. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Let me try to be clear about where my parentheses are. So this is being squared. OK. And then close the parentheses on the expected value. All right, so basically I have this piece plus this piece, and it's being squared. So I'm going to basically, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to expand this, right? So I end up having that first piece squared plus 2 times the first piece times the second piece. So basically, what am I doing? I'm, I'm expanding a product of A plus B, or using, like, you could think of this as using, you know, the old-fashioned FOIL method, right? So I'm expanding this, this product of, of a sum. Okay, and then plus y minus the expected value of y squared. OK? So once you're here, now, now you're maybe starting to see how I'm going to get to my conclusion. Because so I can break this up, the expected value of x minus the expected value of x, let's see, uh, squared, OK, plus 2 times the expected value of x, okay, um, this times y minus the expected value of y, okay, and then plus the expected value of y minus the expected value, okay. And you might be asking yourself right now, how come I'm allowed to break up um, that sum with my expected value? Um, that's based off of the probability or the property of expected value, where if I have um, a sum of random variables, which is basically this is what this is. This is a sum of different sets of random variables. This is equal to the um, expected value of their the sum of their expected values. So the expected value of a sum is the same as the sum of their expected values. This property. Again, I'll, I'll put this, well, actually, I already said I was going to, so it's based off the same property we already used, and I'm going to include this in the description of this video, the proof for that. Okay, and that's why I'm allowed to break up this sum, um, bring in my expected values, okay? So then once you're here, then you say, oh, okay, so this is the variance of x by definition, okay? Uh, that middle piece, by definition, is 2 times the covariance of x and y. Um, and then that last piece is the variance of y. This last piece is the variance of y. So that's basically, it's just written in a different order, but same idea. This is the variance of x plus the variance of y plus 2 times the covariance of x and y. Um, one more thing, I did pull out a constant from the expected value, and that's Another property of expected value that you're allowed to do, the expected value of a times x equals a times the expected value of x. So this property of expected value, I will also include this in the description of this video, but that's why I was allowed to take the 2 out of my expected value. Okay. All right, so once you're there, you have successfully um, shown the proof that the variance of x 
uh, plus y equals the variance of x plus the variance of y plus two times the covariance.